I finally figured out a way to make roads with intersections, and the solution really isn't too complicated. So let's get started. If you haven't heard of me, my name is Joey Carlino, and that's also the name of my channel if you want to check out my other videos. While Tom is busy walking across the US, I'll be showing you how to make cobblestone roads. So first thing I want to do is make a like hilly terrain for our road to go on. So I'm just going to add in a plane, and we're going to make this bumpy with geometry nodes also. And I also want a curve, and this is what we're going to be using for our road. So two objects right here. Now we can go into geometry nodes we can just add a new node tree right here. We're just gonna delete this group input and add a grid, plug that in. And I'm gonna change these two values right here to 99. It's much more dense now. And I'm also gonna make this a little bigger. I'll make it like 10 meters by 10 meters, something like that. And now let's distort this with a set position node right here and a noise texture. So we can plug the factor directly in here, but it's gonna go to the side like that. So let's use a combine XYZ and we can make it only go up and down on the Z axis by plugging the factor in right there. Now let's turn the detail down and we'll turn the scale down pretty far too, like that. This seems fine for drawing on, so let's switch over to our curve now over here and add a new node tree. And now the road, I wanna be able to draw it, so we can tab into edit mode, hit T to open the side panel over here, scroll down to draw, and just you know make sure that we delete this curve right here in edit mode and now we can draw like that so it's going to draw in the air unless you set this to surface so let's control z set that to surface and now we can draw on you know our hills like that let's add an intersection too so we'll draw one across the other so let's hide our plane so we can see our curves a little better and first thing i want to do is resample this so we can add a resample curve like that it's just going to change the resolution i like to set it to length and for now we can just set the length to 0.1 or something but you can set that to whatever you want if you set it higher it will be lower resolution now i want to add a profile to this curve to give it a different shape so we can add a curve to mesh and for the profile curve we're going to use uh, another curve so we'll use a curve line and this is going to look a little weird because by default it goes up on the z-axis. We need to get rid of that and put this on the x-axis. So I'll set this to 0.1 or something. You can see now it's going sideways. To make this more easily editable, we can add a combine XYZ. And I'll make two of those, one for the start and for the end. And we can get a value node. This will be like our thickness. And we'll also get a math node set to subtract. And we'll just set both of these to zero. Now we can set this to 0.1, the value, and make sure that this is in the bottom slot so it's being subtracted from zero. Now we can plug the value into the x for the start, and we'll plug you know, our value node into the x for the end too. So this one is going in the negative direction, this one's going positive, and that lets us you know, change the thickness of our roads. So right now they're not merging. The solution I found for that is by basically volume remeshing. But to do that, first we need to extrude these. So we can extrude the mesh like that, make sure individual is turned off, and we can make this quite a bit shorter like that. Okay, so now let's use the mesh to volume. You need to be using at least version 3.3 to have this node right here. And we also want a volume to mesh drop it in, and now it's basically remeshed. Um, I don't like using a mount, I like using size because this is the actual uh, size of the voxels right here. So we can set this to something like 0.1, which is the same as our resample curve right there. You might have to play with these values depending on the scale that you're at. So like my plane is 10 meters wide, but if you're working with a smaller scene, then you might have to turn this up quite a bit higher. And now that these are remeshed, they're actually like being merged too. So that's what's nice about using this method. Now what I want to do is basically delete everything that's not facing, you know, upwards now. So we can do that with a delete geometry node right here. And this is just going to delete everything. But what I want to do is grab the normal and I want to compare the Z normal. So what I want to do is drag this out and I'm looking for a vector math node uh, set to dot product right here. And we can plug this in directly if we want. And basically what this is going to do is let us compare the normal to another vector. And so I think what we need to do is turn this down. Yeah, if we turn the Z value down, then it's going to look, you know, at everything 
that's facing upward like that. If we flip it around, it'll give us the opposite like that. So this is how you can select things based on their normal direction. And if you want to make this like a smaller amount, um, make it more strict, then you can just bring in math node and I'll set it to zero. And you can, you know, slowly tweak these values like that. I don't think we need to do that for this situation, but just know that you can. Now what I want to do is make sure that this is actually snapping to our plane right here. We can do that with a set position and a proximity node, geometry proximity. So the geometry that I want to reference is our plane right here. So we can go over to the outliner and just drag this in, just click and drag it. And now we have our plane right here. Now I like to set this to relative um, in case we, you know, move this around, it'll still try to cling to it. And we can plug the geometry in right here. And we can plug this into the set position like that. And it should just snap to our hills right there. So if you don't have anything selected, it's going to be hard to see. So again, we can just hide that. But now this is conforming. So now we might have some weird parts uh, like this that are kind of folded over. And we can fix that with a merge node. It's called merge by distance. Drop that in. And we can turn this up to something a little higher. I'll just set it to like 0.1. And this should clear up a lot of the weird issues that we're getting around the edges. And also it's going to make our mesh more irregular, which I think actually just looks a little better. We can change the shape of these a little too by bringing in a dual mesh node right here like that. And you can see that some of them are going to become more like hexagonal. If you don't want there to be any rectangular ones like that, before the dual mesh, you can put a triangulate and it will basically turn all of them into hexagons. To turn all of these into individual stones, we want to extrude them. But first, we're going to split all of the edges and we're going to scale it down with a scale elements right here. And I'll just scale it down to 0.5 or something like that. So they're scaled down halfway. And I'll explain why we're doing this a little later, but I think it's kind of a necessary step to avoid some problems. Now we can extrude all of these like that. It kind of doesn't matter whether this is set to individual or not because all of them are separate faces, but I like to turn it off anyway. Obviously these are way too tall, so we can set this to 0.05 or something like that. They're a little shorter now. And so the reason I scaled them down first is because None of these have bottoms, and so I want to join uh, this to this so that they all actually have bottoms. We can add a join geometry right here, and we'll grab a flip, what's it called, flip faces right here. So we're taking the faces right here, we're flipping them so they're pointing the other way, and then we're joining them back up like that so they're actually facing down. And now we need to merge them so they're actually connected. And now they should all be merged. So. If you don't scale it down first, then basically all of the bottoms are just going to connect again, even though we split them right here. So I like to scale them down first, and then we can scale them back up. We scaled them down halfway here. That means we need to scale them up double, so we can set this to two. You might be wondering why I w went through the trouble of doing this. It's because we're going to use a subdivision surface right here, and that will smooth all of these out. And if we don't add the bottom on, then you can see the bottom doesn't get smooth. Now, this is a pretty subtle difference, and if you don't want to, you don't have to uh, use basically any of these nodes right here, and it will you know, work out fine for you. Now we can make the shading smooth, um, set shade smooth right here, drop that in. And if these look too low poly, you can turn the subdivisions up, but be careful because we have a lot of stones right now. You can see we can turn on timings, so if this time gets too high, it'll be pretty slow in the viewport. So just be careful what you set this to. Now, if you're bothered by any like really small pieces like that, then we can delete some of them. I want to do this after splitting them right here. So we can just make some room. And I'm going to add another delete node, delete geometry right here. And we're going to grab a face area. And now we actually have a way to compare the size of faces so we can you know, compare them with a compare node. And I like to set this to less than, so we're deleting things that are less than this area right here. We can plug that in. And so nothing's gonna happen when you have it set to zero, but as we turn it up, you can see things will start to delete. Now you have to change this in really small increments. So what I like to do is use a uh, math node set to divide. So we can just search for that in here. And I change the second value to something higher, like a thousand. Um, and that means that the first value is always going to be like a thousand times smaller 
and it allows us to just turn it up slower. Turn it up until the smallest ones are gone. You can turn this up however high you want, really. It doesn't matter. Now we can basically just draw this however we want. So tab into edit mode, uh, select everything and delete. And now we can, you know, draw roads wherever we want. We can add some intersections. Now it's not perfect if you, you know, totally just spam it. Sometimes you'll get weird gaps like this. So it's definitely not the perfect solution, but it does allow us to have merging roads. Another quick thing you can do if you want more control is, uh, you know, change the radius right here. And this will actually change the curve radius by default because we didn't at any point use a set radius. So it's not being overridden. So if you want a skinnier road, you can either turn this value up per curve or you can use Alt S. That's the shortcut if you want a really thick or skinny road, maybe like a sidewalk or a path. So if you want all of these to have different colors, then you can do that. Let's go to the very end and set a material first. So let's put a set material node right there. And we don't have any materials yet, so we have to add one. Go over here to the material properties tab and add a new material. And I'll just name this uh, stone and we can set that right here. So if we were using instances, we would be able to randomize the color um, for each stone pretty easily, but they're not instances. So the way that I found that works well is the mesh island node. And so this will give you the index of each separated piece of geometry. And we can use this to control a white noise node right here. I like to set this to 1D and plug the index into the W right here. And then we can take the color and plug it into the output like that. So for some reason, this only works in EV. And if you want it to work in cycles, you have to plug the index into the output and then do the rest in the shader editor. And then it works fine in cycles. Um, so if you want, you can just use the value too. Um, the color is basically giving you three different values, the red, the green, and the blue. But they're all going to be uh, you know, random grayscale values between 1 and 0. So let's go over to shading right here turn on look dev real quick so we can access our output attributes right here just go to modifier properties and drop this down right now this is empty and we need to have a name for it so i'll just set it to um i'll just call it color so whatever name you chose over here is the name that you're going to use for the attribute node like this and it is case sensitive so this is all lowercase make sure it's all lowercase here too now we can just plug the color directly into the base color and it should yeah it's all rainbowy now now if we want a grayscale value um, we can just get a separate xyz or a separate color um, it doesn't matter which one they'll be the same and now we have three different you know grayscale values that we can use so you can use this to randomize the color, um, either with a color ramp or you can use a map range if it's grayscale or a mix RGB. I'll set one to be dark gray, one to be a little lighter like that. And if we want, we can add some color in. So I'll make this uh, like a pale orange, something like that. And if we want to add some bumpiness to this, then we can add a noise texture. I'll use a texture coordinate and make sure this is set to object like that. We'll bring in a mapping right here. Now, if we take a look at this, they're basically all going to share the same texture. If we want these to be different per stone also, then we basically just need to use one of these values in here and plug that into the location of the mapping. And if it's not random enough, you can just multiply it by a big number. So we'll just set this to multiply and multiply it by like a thousand or something. And now they'll all be slightly different. Turn this up a little higher like that. We can use this as a bump map, plug the factor into the height and the normal into the normal of the principled shader. And I'll turn the distance like way down like 0.1. I'll do like 0 0.03 for the distance. That seems good. And turn the detail up a little. And so now we have some rough rocks. We can turn the roughness up quite a bit too, like that. I'll add a mix RGB and we'll make these look a little dirty noise texture right here plug that into the factor and we can set this one to be black like that and now all of these will look a little dirtier too so i think this looks pretty good now and we have a dirty cobblestone road that you can draw wherever you want make sure you check out tom's other channel i'm walking to see some real roads thanks for watching and have a good one